Islam. Peace and Hotep. Welcome once again. Canaan Land More free free Tuesday class. We wanna um send a shout out to the more worldwide. I send a shout out to the Moors worldwide, all the Moors out there who's doing their thing, you know what I mean, mainly studying, getting their, getting their stuff right, getting their things in order, um, so that we can do what Noble Juali ordered, and one of those things is uplifting fallen humanity and another one of those things is making sure we take our place amongst the affairs of men today the 9th of June 2015 and as usual you know that there's a lot going on you know what I mean but don't be discouraged. I mean, hold steadfast because we're gonna get our we're gonna get our due reward. But we have to stay steadfast because we're hitting we're hitting a hundred years behind. You know what I mean, over a hundred years behind. And when we when we look at all the things that you know Moors are dealing with world around the world um, we realize that Moors are dealing with Moors are dealing with issues just like like niggers got issues or whatever unfortunately and a lot of that is because you know we have these Moors that are coming into the movement and they're diverting their attention away from Noble Juali and listening to these old Moors that brought them in. Right? <coughs> um, a lot of these old Moors that, that brought these Moors in that we see around today, you know, that you know we might we might see a situation where, you know, especially on social media or whatever, that you're gonna you're going to have um, certain individuals um, not really talk up, you know what I mean? You know, they're not really going to be talking up, but they'll send one of their minions to go talk and leave comments and whatever like that, you know what I mean? Uh, under, you know, they have some, some back at it, right? But know that all their stuff is dead. Drawley already called out all those people. Emily Eel already called out all those people, put them on front street, put them on the record that they're a fraud, and we need to take serious what Noble Drawley laid down and what Mili Eel laid down. Right? Noble Drawley told them all everything that they needed to know in order for them to save themselves. Then they assassinated him. And then, before he died, you know what I mean, he gave the authority to Edward Mealy Ill to carry on the work that Noble Jolly was doing. And then Mealy Ill started, you know what I mean, doing whatever he had to do. And, you know, people didn't agree with him being successor and all that type of stuff. Play this game like he's not, you know, He's not qualified, you know what I mean? If Drawley thinks he's qualified, then he's qualified. I don't care what other people think about him or whatever, you know? But still, right? Infiltrated that, made it seem like he's some weirdo, you know what I mean? And they're the real whatever. So, we want to um, just put some faces and stuff for some names that you might have heard or whatever, so that you can um, recognize that the people who are around 
today that talk against what active Mars are doing. Because, you know, remember, nobody really called us out as far as us active Mars. You know what I mean? He called us out and said that we're going to come. Right? He warned everybody. <laughs> Stop playing around. The new Mars are going to come with your eyes wide open. And they're going to carry out the law. And not only that, they're going to take all you old Moors who haven't done nothing for 80 years or whatever, put you guys in the back. The old Moors don't want to go in the back. They want to play front street still. They want to play like, you know, they got some authority still. Right? We're talking about individuals who were down with the assassination of Nobu Jwali. And now they're fronting like, you know, Everything's cool and unity and all that stuff when, you know, you can't get down with traitors. There has to be a separation between all Moors who have their minions trying to convince people about you have to be in the temple in order to be a Moor and stuff like that. And new Moors with their eyes wide open, seeing and knowing, who already know about left hand path, occult, whatever you want to call it. We already know about it, right? And we're bringing all that stuff that we learned into this Moorish movement, right? And when we bring all those things that we learn into this Moorish movement, our duty is to show the connection between all these things so people can't be confused when they see more. But the only reason that people are confused when they see Moors is because they engage some new Moor, right, that has the frequency of an old dirty Moor, right? So, I'm going to put some people out there so y'all know who they are. And remember that these are the ones that were down with the assassination. Right, of Nobu Jwali. So we have Divin Zell, he's one of the so called, one of the many reincarnated Nobu Jwali, right? And notice that they don't use their name, right? They say they call themselves Prophet Nobu Jwali reincarnated. They don't use their name, that they nationalize that. This is what their name is now. Prophet Nobu Jwali reincarnated, call them that, right? And they play the game, they got the pouch and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? They play the role, they got the shiny, you know, the shiny stuff. Play the role like they're Nobu Jwali, right? When Nobu Jwali himself said that there's only one prophet. Why do you think he said that <laughs> in 19 whatever? Because he's seen all these jokers coming. Jwali warned y'all. He's a prophet. The prophet said to the Moors, there's only one prophet. Why did he say that? Because he's seen all these individuals coming. Seen them coming. Before they even came. Before they even had the thought in their mind, hey, I'm going to call myself reincarnated or whatever. He already put it. He already checkmated them. And now they're pretending. You know what I mean? They got their minions around today. Talking about respect the reincarnated prophet. We're not respecting anybody who calls themselves Nobu Jwali. That's a fraud because there's only one prophet. Right? So that's one of them. Right? Um, Jackson Bay left and A. Williamson L. Who were, con who were concerned in the fight for control of the cult. There's some more. Some more and more. That were down with the split. Instead of telling everybody, well, Nobu Jwali died, let's just stick to the program, right? Go out there, redeem the people, stick to what Nobu Jwali brought. He made Mili look successor, whatever. They thought Mili was some weakling. They thought Mili wasn't qualified. So they said, we're going to take charge of the situation, right? We're going to be the ones that are going to move this movement forward. Come follow us. And like idiots, people follow them. 
That's why Noble Jewali told them back then. This is for the young and unborn generations. Which means that it wasn't for those individuals that were around him in the time that he was around. If he's going to say, I came for the young and unborn, and every around him, everybody around him is adults, obviously he never came for them. Right? And obviously he never came for them. You know? And people can call it what they want. Right? This is letting you know who the traitors are. Right? This is not bashing somebody or whatever like that. We don't care about that. Right? This is letting you know the background that these people aren't going to tell you because half the people who say that they're more science temple are down with either these guys, they're down with Lomax Bay, they're down with Gibbons L, they're down with Kirkman Bay, all the Moors who were down with the assassination of your prophet and want to tell you in 2015 about you need to naturalize in order to be free, pay 200 right? To come to some redemption classes or some crap like that right front okay now this is what this is what noble Jawali got right noble Jawali got assassinated this is the prophet now you know what i mean this is to show you the humility of the prophet this is to show you how how he doesn't have to prove anything right kiss Keep it simple, stupid. Okay? This is Noble Jewali. And don't forget, you know, you can go to Canaan Land Moors, visit Noble Jewali gravesite on YouTube, and you can see us taking, you know, 500 hours to find this in the, in the cemetery. Right? But then when you go to the reincarnated guys, this is what the reincarnated guys got on their stuff. So this is the reincarnated people. This is the people after Noble Juali that said that they're Noble Juali. This is what they got. Where they're buried at. They got a mausoleum with gate and stuff like that. Engraved stuff on on <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Right? Look what they got on their stuff. Okay? This is what they got. You tell me this isn't ego right here and then people are gonna follow these individuals? This is what they're repping. Build me a mausoleum when I die. Look, look, look at look at everything else in the in the graveyard. Consider everything in the background. Forget about what is in the foreground. Look at the background and ask yourself, like the audacity of these individuals. Right? That not only that they're going to call themselves Nobu Juali reincarnated and not use their name, don't oh, forget. No Juali is not buried in here. Why is the same Juali on this? Prophet on top of that and noble. Right? So for all those Moors who's always talking about, you know, when the Moors going to have stuff? How come the Moors don't have stuff? <laughs> this is where your treasury money went. Here's your treasury money. The millions of dollars that were in the treasury went to give all these guys mausoleums and limousines and stuff like that. After Noble Jawali passed form and they robbed everything out. Made all the factories that the Moors had shut down because of their sellout actions. Old Moors, still around today in the skin of new Moors. Still around today in the skin of new more right and this speaks this speaks strongly to what noble Jolly laid down this will make you know why they didn't read the stuff to be read in every meeting islam i am glad to know that i have a few faithful moors among you all and i desire for them to know the truth and the divine truth there is a host of jealousy about me and the movement now by the same people on our side of the nation that claim it was only a joke and unreal. But now, since they have found out from the government officials and the nations of the earth that this is the only sole foundation that all Asiatics must depend upon for their earth, earthly salvation as American citizens, right? That's why they call themselves Nobu Juali. 
because they know they couldn't call themselves Givens L. They couldn't call themselves all these names that they had and get anywhere with the people. Because the only sole foundation is Noble Drew Ali that is going to make the people... The name Noble Drew Ali is a, is a ritual. The name Noble Drew Ali is... Um, uh, an activator. Right? You say Noble Drew Ali to Moors who are of a sincere character, immediately they... they want to know who he is. Immediately they want to find out more information. Logically. Because you never heard his name before. And you know about everybody else. So when they say reincarnated prophet, Noble Drew Ali. Noble Drew Ali reincarnated. Understand that they are finesse masters. They study language they study how to speak to people they study how to approach people in order to get their attention right these are the attention getters right keep in mind the 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 letters to be proclaimed every meeting they are working every scheme that they can to disqualify me so they themselves may take charge of the situation to the point of calling their self Nobu Juali so they can take charge. I have notified all these things to you long ago in the past. It is through the faithful Moors that attribute to the movement and uplifting fund. The ones that paid their divine respect to me and the movement will be remembered. That is why I am calling upon all faithful Moors to increase their faithfulness to me, your prophet, and your divine Moorish movement. Right? Why is he saying that it's yours? He's saying that it's yours because you, as Moorish Americans, have a responsibility to tell somebody who doesn't know about this because if you don't, then stuff is just going to continue. Right? Because, you know, the, these individuals' perspective, right, their perspective is teach people that being more is the temple. Being more is about the temple. Being more is about, you know, this building with a sign. Right? When Noble Drali told the Moors, come all ye Asiatics of North America. Come all ye Asiatics of North America. Not come all ye Moors of North America. So that means he wasn't talking to the people who already got this info. If he's saying, come all ye Asiatics of North America and hear the truth about your nationality and birthrights, he's talking about people outside the doors of the Morris Science Temple. That these individuals have no intention of going to get or whatever. Right? Now, I've seen Sunday's class. Right? And... Don't get it fooled or don't get it twisted that, you know, we remove people, right? Demons can't live around God. It's that simple, right? When, when Allah and man manifest, demons run fast, right? When Allah and man manifest demons find any way that they can to get man to be man again so so now then they can have control because demon could only control man demon can't control Allah right just like Drew Ali told the Moors that you know if you dream about me know that that's me because devil can't steal my appearance so if you had some situation and you you know it's see something out the corner of your eye or whatever, you look and you see a man standing there, you know what I mean, giving you the Islam, looks like Nobu Ali. it's probably him. There's not no demon. If you sleep and you dream about Nobu Ali, like that was Nobu Ali for real, on the soul plane, coming to check you. Because the devil cannot steal his appearance. Same way that the demons 
can't influence Allah in man. It's not happening. They'll try to do whatever that they can, but right. That's why when you see um, um on these you know social whatever, even if you go on the YouTube videos and you see people come talking there whatever stuff, leaving comments about whatever, I always reply to them. Always, especially if they're talking some BS or whatever, right? And I'll tell them and their mom stuff and all that stuff. Because you don't think that these are those old suit and tie morals that would not slap the shit out of you. Like, we will slap you. We will kidnap you and take you down somewhere and kick your ass. Just for dissing the prophet. Like, for real. Right? It's not... We're not taking this as, you know, some joke or whatever. You know what I mean? People out here... Sister just the other day getting meat in her back or whatever because she's black. You know what I mean? There's a pool party or some yeah. crap like that. You know what I mean? You think they do, you know? Thing that they're dealing with right now here with the carding. You know? These Negro black colored leaders or whatever want to, you know, force the mayor to, you know, get the police chief to say something. The black police chief, by the way, to say something about these, you know, carding and. You know, stopping people for no reason in, in only particular communities where, you know, particular people live and filling out some card and then using that card and putting that in a database or whatever like that so they can build up, you know, some information about, you know, in certain areas and when you see guys with these type of tattoos and these type of knapsacks and these type of shoes and these type of whatever, then they belong to a particular demographic or whatever, right? Slave culture. Like these people don't want to let go as far as out here and that's cool you know if, if that's the position that they want to take but don't complain about it and you don't you know mayor not going to do nothing you need negro you know he doesn't care right he doesn't care i need finance and i need it badly never before have i needed finance so badly as i do at present so i can shove aside the discord that is facing the nation it all comes through jealousy because of my fame and nobility. The nations of the world will not recognize the movement without I, the prophet, being head. It has been proven by my works which I have performed in the last few years. So they know exactly what they're doing, calling themselves Nobudrali reincarnated. Right? And then, again, they have their individuals today, 2015, who wrecked that. And who rep those individuals and tell you, Moors, new Moors, that you have to honor Noble Jewali reincarnated temple Moors. You have to, because that's Noble Jewali reincarnated. Slap these idiots and tell them you're not accepting anything from them. Right? Because it's a fraud. And they know that it's a fraud. Speaking about fraud, right? You have Fard, Fard the fraud. What did he call himself? Prophet W. D. Fard. Prophet, right? Prophet Fard. Why did he call himself Prophet Fard? Jacking Noble Jawali's energy in order to found the Nation of Islam, which was the Temple of Islam. So they even Jack Temple from Noble Jawali, and then they changed that later. And then all of them had fezzes. You could clearly see that they got fezzes on right here. This is NOI right here. They all got fezzes on. Why they all got fezzes on for? It? They just got fezzes on just because, you know, they're, you know, that's their headwear or whatever like that. No. All these were morals that left the temple. And they left the temple. And they went, they went directly against Noble Jawali's orders, marked their fez and all that stuff. When Noble Jawali told more, don't mark your fez, be pure, be, be clean like your prophet. But they don't want to be clean like their prophet, they want to be dirty. They want to be mucky more. They want to be more more with dirt on their head. Coming out of walls, coming out of alleys with turbans and fezes on, smoking cigarettes and stuff like that. Drinking liquor. Coming to place talking to people with liquor on their breath and stuff like that and expect to get honored 
right? Profit fired. Remember, profit fired. Okay. You're also going to go to um, Dr. Aleem El Bay's website, and he has extensive information on his website, right? Um, Yudan Ali, first secretary of Allah's Temple of Islam. Okay. Once again, the Mark Fez, pressing and star on the Fez. After Noble Jawali said, don't mark your Fez. Right? Noble Jawali said, don't mark your Fez. And then you can also tell that by the angle of his head or whatever, where the tassel is on the Fez, it's obviously tacked there. If the angle of his head is where it is, the tassel, right, the tassel is supposed to be hidden in the back somewhere like around here, based on the angle of his head. That's why CMB said, you know, make sure you throw away everything that you know except mathematics. Throw away everything that you thought you know. But mathematics, keep that, because, you know, mathematics is science. And it would it would help you pick out things, right? First secretary of Allah's temple of Islam, that became the nation of Islam. That they don't even want to talk about temple of Islam today, and they never would talk about it. So we got mad work to do, and it's being done. You know what I mean? So honors to the Moors that you know doing what they got to do around here to make sure that this word gets out. Now we're talking about this thing. Right? Talking about this. So there he is right there. He's got the knee in the back of the sister or whatever. Right? Now keep in mind that these are children now. We're not talking about adults on the street now. Now we're talking about children now. Right? And yeah, we could play the game, you know what I mean? Oh my gosh, he's so, you know, whatever, and blah, blah, whatever. But, you know, when you have no status, you get what you deserve. It's unfortunate, but that's the reality of the situation. Every situation that our people go through, every situation that our people go through, right? Every situation that our people go through, is because of their not having a status. Right? Cool. He grabbed me, twisted my arm on my back, and shoved me in the grass and started pulling the back of my braid. The girl, Dejeria Beckon, told Fox 4 Dallas on Sunday night. Oh, Dallas. Interesting. I was telling him to get off me because my back was hurting bad. A quote-unquote police officer in McKinney, Texas has been placed on administrative leave and then actually he just resigned or whatever. That came out today that he resigned. After being filmed aggressively handcuffing and then pulling a weapon on a group of black teens following an incident at a local pool party on Friday night. You know, they already identify them, have them marked, have them classified under their slave brand, which gives him jurisdiction to do whatever he wants to them. Right? Just because they have no status. Which they were warned about in divine warning by the prophet for the nation warned about. They're right. warned by Nobu Diwali already. But, you know, they don't know about Nobu Diwali because, one, hundred years have passed and these old Moors that are around today as new Moors with old Moors dirty mentality didn't inform the people and two, 
Dirty Morris also includes all the black leaders who didn't tell them. Because all them guys are Masons or whatever like that. And they're keeping secrets from their people with regard to status and all that. Right? And we have to realize and recognize, just like we were telling the sister on Sunday, you really think that you're going to sit back and benefit off birthrights without putting any work in? <laughs> you have another thing coming for you. If you think that you're going to benefit off driving without licenses, using nationality cards, and driving on Moorish plates, and having Moorish jobs where you go to your job, and you know what I mean? The boss has a fez on, and the secretary has a fez on, and whatever has a turban on, and all the employees are Moors, and you go to work, and everybody's saying Islam. If you think that you're going to have that without you creating that which you want, you're not having that. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. It's as easy as that. It's as easy as that. So, you know, if you live somewhere and you realize, damn, Moors haven't done nothing here for a hundred years, then you be that one to do something there so that something could happen there for a hundred years. Because if you don't do it, it's not getting done. Because these old Moors, in new Moor skin, their job is to keep this right where it is. And if there is somewhere called Moor Science Temple of America, and there are people that call themselves Grand Sheik, Grand Governor, Supreme, National, whatever, Sheik, Sheikesses, or whatever like that, and they haven't done anything in a hundred years, they're more than likely not going to do nothing. <laughs> more than likely, they're going to do nothing. So don't wait, don't expect, don't think that you're going to get something. Just do what has to get done. And don't get caught up in titles and needing something from some grand body of whatever to prove that you're whatever. Go study. We already give you all the online university, rvbaypublications.com, the online university for more. If you want to go learn something about more, more is history, law, astrology, cosmology, etymology, whatever else, go to rvbaypublications.com and show there for a few years. Get yourself right, and then go start teaching some classes out there. Because, trust me, these people are not going to give you any charters or nothing like that. They don't have any intention of freeing the people. Their purpose is getting their check from Rome so they can keep their little temple whatever open, so they can keep pushing this religiousized, dogmatized perspective of more science. And not telling people what this is about. And then playing this game, you know what I mean? Dress up in uniform, unison, you know what I mean? Everybody got combat boots on, everybody got fezzes on, everybody got, you know, army shirt with the button right here, and then the chain with everybody got the same chain. And then you look up, wow, yo, that's the more unity. But then all those people over there naturalizing people, which is going directly against Noble Drawley's orders. Because he said, proclaim your nationality. And he never once mentioned naturalized. And as soon as the naturalizers start coming around and convincing people that, yeah, you know, it's, it's really about naturalized because, you know, you're a foreigner in this land because you're black. So in order to get out of the foreign status, you know, you're going to have to naturalize. And then when you naturalize, that gets you out of the foreign status. And once you get out the foreign status, now you can proclaim your nationality. When black is a fraud, it doesn't have any type of merit whatsoever. You know what I mean? And where did a foreigner get jurisdiction in your land to call you black? 
they don't have jurisdiction, then anything they do is null and void. Null and void. Right? So it's really on you. You want to see something? Moorish? Then go to that bank that you know, that you've been going to or whatever. Apply for the most amount that you can get or whatever. And build something more if you want something more. Because trust me, the world knows and is waiting on the more. The world knows and is waiting on the more. Nobody will even told you. Go to the bank and subscribe for as much as you can and give it to the more movement. Why are you saying that for? Because they were already robbing the stuff before Nova Drawley died. Why are you telling me that he needs finance badly? Why is he going to tell you that he needs finance badly when there's so much millions of members in the Moorish movement? Because they already started robbing the stuff before Nova Drawley died. They already had their hand in the pot before Nova Drawley died. Or was assassinated. You correct that. Right? They already had their hand in the pot. For, for who knows how long, but Nobudrali realized that. Because when you start, if you're the prophet of the Moorish Science Temple, Moorish Divine and National Movement, Moorish Holy Temple of Science, and you know, you know that there's a standard procedure of sending your monthly stuff or whatever, so we can see what it is that you guys are spending money on or whatever like that, and nothing's coming in, obviously there's problems. Which is why he was going around to all the temples. And it's in, it's in the oral statements. Tell him more. <laughs> get your shit together before I get there or whatever. Lace up your shoes because if I get there and stuff's not in order, you're out the seat. Then they knew that was coming. Get no withdrawal out of the way. And now they can play their game. Right? Of... Because remember, let's take for example the naturalizer moors in Temple 13 in Baltimore. There's newspaper articles of that grand sheik over there saying that moors are black people. There's news articles of that saying that moors are black people and they should pay taxes and should have licenses. Right? And you know a lot of those um, sometime is more because they don't take it past the threshold right okay they don't they don't get you over the hill they just lead you up the incline half the moors who are running this fraud of um, not doing their job, haven't done their job. They have L or B hyphen to a European name. That's not that's not Moors. If you're proclaiming your nationality, there's no way that you're gonna stay on the level of having a European name hyphen with L or B. That's diversity of citizenship. You think when Fei, Li, Wang comes here and then they call him Ben Wang, that when he goes back over there, he's Ben Wang when he goes back to China? You're not Ben Wang in China. When he goes home from school, and his school ID says Ben Wang. When he goes home, they don't call him Ben Wang at home. Because you can't hyphen the free national name on the, on the stuff. You could do it. You can get away with it. You can do some stuff with it. But that's not the, all, the end all and be all. There's a further line that you have to try to reach. Right? Just to show you that everybody knows what's up. And 
they're letting us know that the time is now for the morgue, right? Um, Ariana Miyamoto was born and raised in Nagasaki, speaks Japanese as her first language and has a Japanese mother. Miss Universe cont contestant Ariana Miyamoto is facing criticism from those who say she is not Japanese enough. The 20-year-old model became the first ever mixed race beauty pageant winner when she was crowned Miss Nagasaki earlier this year. Success, which has not come without challenges, is one of the least racially diverse countries in the world. In one of the least racially diverse countries in the world. So honors to Miss Japan, Ariana Miyamoto, Asiatic, right? who has a quote-unquote African-American father and a uh, Japanese mother. Well, let me get that. Hold on right there. Right. Japanese mother. Huh? The divine origin of the Asiatic nation. The fallen sons and daughters of the Asiatic nation of North America need to learn to love instead of hate and to know of his higher self and lower self. This is the uniting of the Holy Quran of Mecca for teaching and instructing all Moorish Americans, etc. The key of civilization was and is in the hands of the Asiatic nation. The key of civilization was and is. Right? So past and present and future. It's all on the Moors. But that's if the Moors want their stuff done. You know, nobody really laid out everything, so more do I have any excuse, right? And like we said in in class, us doing classes is petty. Us doing classes is nonsensical because the hundred years nobody really came. We're doing classes. That's it. There's somebody in the chat talking about where's our where's our currency or whatever like that, right? How are we going to have currency when everybody's been following dirty morals for a hundred years? Who have no intention of you having your own currency. They have no intention of you getting off of this slave ship called U.S. and Canada Corporation. They have no intention. Right? To, to the point where we have to alter our Moorish nationality demonstration and learn to live within contract because of it being such a battle to be Moors. It's not supposed to be a battle to be Moors. Look at all the stuff Lobo Juali did. You think it was challenging? Well, how are he going from state to state to state to state to state to state and all that stuff, teaching people and starting up temples and all this stuff? Right? Exercising his birthright. And ordered Moors to do the same stuff. And Moors who, who received orders didn't carry them out. So again, now we got issues where, you know, Moors got, got to go to court and Moors got to write writs and, you know what I mean, defend their position as Moors. When that's not supposed to be, you think there wouldn't be a Moorish American box to check off if Moors did their job? There would be a Moorish American box to check off. So you don't have to check black or white or whatever. You don't have to live within contract. You check off Moorish American. Everything was done already. And these individuals who are still around today, that's why we talk about them so much, because we realize that us not talking about these individuals lets them live still. And once they live, then they have influence over weak minds that don't study. And once they get those people, they might as well be Negroes. Once the dirty Moors get Moors who are unconscious into getting down with them, those Moors might as well 
just be Negroes. Because that's what they're doing anyways. They're not teaching them about their nationality and birthrights. You know how many Moors come through Canaan land Moors because they went to temples and they're not teaching nationality and birthrights there? They're teaching pray and and worship noble Juali. Like teaching that. That's their position of what this is. Right? The Egyptians, who were the Hamatites and of a direct descendant of Mizraim, the Arabians, the seed of Hagar, Japanese and Chinese. So Japanese are down with this. And then you have over there a dark skinned Japanese. Right? Because you know, lineage comes through the mother. So she's Japanese. So you have a dark skinned Japanese that won Miss Japan or whatever. You think stuff's not turned around? Who votes for them people? Who made her win? You think some Asiatics that's dark skin made her win? <laughs> you don't know Asians that's dark skin that's judging no Japan, Miss World or whatever? That's Japanese people. And they recognize that we need to change we need to change up this thing right here. We need to change this. Right? Now another thing. The Asiatic nations and countries in North, South, and Central America, the Moorish Americans and Mexicans in North America. Right? So when we do the whole map and we look above Mexico, where the Mexicans are, on the map they're going to say United States. But Noble Juali said that the people who are in North America are Mexicans and Moorish Americans. So if he's saying that Mexicans and Moorish Americans are the ones that are the Asiatics of North America, right? And he told the Moors that we are Moorish because we're descendants of Moroccans born in America, then that means that Mexico, U.S. jurisdiction, and Canada jurisdiction is really Morocco. Because we are descendants of Moroccans born in America. And wherever the Moroccans are, obviously that's where Morocco is. Just like where the Brazilians are, that's where Brazil is. Where the Chileans are, that's where Chile is. Where the Hindus are, that's where Hindustan is. Where the Australians are, that's where Australia is. So if the Moorish Americans are in North America, then clearly Morocco, who Moorish Americans are the descendants of, must be that jurisdiction where Mexico, North America, where Mexico, U.S., and Canada is. And it's just that simple. And people could go and they could make up all whatever they want to make up. You know, that's cool. We're not going to argue with stateless people. We're not going to argue with Moors that already have this information and they're not telling people. We're not arguing with them. Because we already know that that 99% of more are sold out. It's not even nothing that we have to debate. You already know that. Point is, what are we going to do about it? We're going to get to work and start going up and waking up these people. Because they're telling me. When we came into this in 08, and nobody heard about this here ever before. And we start exercising nationality and birthrights in this jurisdiction. How do we know that we were onto something? Because every time we exercise birthright, we realize this foreigner changing his procedures 
of how they do everything. For years, for years, right? Got a ticket or whatever. You got to go to court. Court they come, check the list. Oh yeah, this is my courtroom. You wait. They unlock the door five minutes before or whatever like that. And they let everybody go inside and go talk to the prosecutor. For years, it was like that. As soon as more start going to court now, you can't do that anymore. They're coming outside. They set up outside. And they're going to see you outside. Knew something was up. Knew that we did something. We knew that we changed the, their process of how they do things. You get kidnapped, take you to the back or whatever, you know, give you your whatever, do your fingerprint, blah, blah, take you to the so-called, you know, jail, keep you there till it's court time, court time, they come get you, and then they hold you until they bring you upstairs to the room, you go in the room, you do your whatever in front of the judge or whatever like that, you do your stuff, they take you back downstairs, take you back to jail. Until they release you. Morris go up in there. Do whatever with the judge. Put your stuff on the record. Blah, blah. Take you downstairs. Release you from the jail. From the court. That's not common that they do that. So, when you go to store. Put down nationality card. You know, your taxes off. Now they're going to say. We'll give you a tax exemption card separate from, you know, we'll, we'll give you our tax exemption card for our jurisdiction of store. So whenever you come here, you just show this tax exemption card and we'll take your taxes off, no problem. Why are they doing that for? Just because they feel like it? No, they're doing that because of change processes. Because they don't want Negroes who's paying taxes which keeps them alive or whatever like that, because, you know, that way they don't have to pay their own tax, knowing that they're tax exempt. Because we have influence. Like Jwali said, the key of civilization was and is in the hands of the Asiatics. Was and is in our hands. So it's really up to us and get out of your mind all these guys with their grand major and whatever. They haven't done anything for 80, 90, 100 years. They haven't done anything. Not because they post some pictures on Facebook now and they have a video now and they didn't do videos for the past 80 years. They didn't do no videos for the past 80 years. But now they're doing videos. Now they got websites. Now they're talking about this and they're talking about that. That time's done. It's too late now. You already, you already messed up. Don't try, don't try to placate now. Like you're down with something. You know what I mean, yeah, we're down for the Moorish movement. All of a sudden, you're down for the Moorish movement. All of a sudden, just because active Moors now are stepping up and they're doing certain things, make, making these people look stupid for not doing, telling people about this thing for so long. That that active Moors. Moors who are students of noble Juali, Moors who are students of law, Moors who are students of whatever, whatever the subject matter. Moors who are students taking this information to people who don't know, barbershop, you know, store, you know, school, whatever, and putting people on. And people taking this information and saying, yo, this is actually, this, yeah. this is real. This is really where it's supposed to be at. This is really what it's about. Realizing something. Realizing something. Without a temple, that makes temple people look stupid. Because they've been supposed to have done that for the past 80 years and haven't. That's why we tell Moors. Make sure you go to the Moorish directory. Go to the Dirty Moors page and read that so you know what Dirty Moors are. MoorishDirectory.com 
And again, that's just some Moors who, you know, I belong to no temple or nothing like that. That's just some Moors who study. And they realize that, damn, you know, we could actually do something. Let's start up a website. And then they start up a website and they assist Moors who are looking for assistance, whether it's where to study, where to buy certain things from Moors, you know, who, who's who, what's what, where to go to get information so people don't get played because you can't have, you know. You know, and again, us doing classes and stuff like that is petty. We only do that because, you know, we're just soldiers, you know what I mean? We're down for the movement and we're going to put out some information because we know people aren't going to put out this information. So, we take it on ourselves put it out. Because if we leave it up to people who's been saying that they're more science whatever for the past hundred years, ain't nothing going out. Nobody's not going to find out anything. This is going to continue to be that stagnant whatever that, you know, um, what's his name? Roosevelt and, and, and all these so-called, you know, democracy presidents, you know, did their thing to, to stop this. And they, they don't have a, they can't stop this. They really can't stop this too far now for them to try to stop this because like we're saying these are different mores right I know you know not no terrorists nothing like that sleeper cell and all that crap but you know you come at more the wrong way and you will get some guaranteed because Allah is not playing Nobody while he's not playing. And he's working from the soul plane to make sure that there's only one prophet and there's only one temple. And the one temple is not some temple in some where there's saying that yeah, that's the number one temple. Right? The number one temple. temple is the Moorish nation. That's the number one temple. You want unity? Look for active Moors. You want disunity? Look for dirty Moors. And they're out there. Not even like they're not out there. Not even like they're in the open. You know what I mean? You have clean shots at their head. Clean shots. So make sure that you study your prophet. Because studying anything else is going to get you trapped up in stuff where you don't want to be. Now, I want to give a big shout out because this got kickstarted by, you know, once again, you know, there's another active more out there who's doing what he does. And I give brother supreme honor because, you know, he doesn't play, not do what he's supposed to do as a more, right? Um, brother, brother Rami Salam L, you go on his YouTube page, I am HH Temple on YouTube. Just put Rami Salam L in, he'll come up, right? He did a class where he brought out, um, he brought out a book by James Churchward called Lost Continent of Moo. So we just want to put some, some of that stuff on the record. Now, the reason why it's crazy is because when he dropped that, he dropped that class maybe um, night before, two nights before or something like that, I was dealing with Sister Anya Bay. And she was telling me about this book. Yo, you need to get this book or whatever. <laughs> because, like, the book is just vast as far as indigenous, aboriginal, whatever, history in the Americas, in the world or whatever. You know what I mean? Um... The Lost Continent of Moon. 
you need to get a book or whatever, you need to check that book. And then two days later, we know without no discussion or nothing, you know, brother puts out the class referencing the book. Referencing the same book. Right? Reading from the same book. Right? Which which, you know, showed the the synchronicity between active morals. The, the the level that that active morals study affects the ether that because you know like we were building on the book hard we were building on the book and brother picked up the frequency in California and did a class and used the book as a reference and it's not a book that you're just gonna use because you know what I mean you, you got books or whatever yeah, right, right. you know what I mean it's not one of them books like it's a book that it's a specific mindset with regard to that book you know what I mean because it's dealing with the history of Mu which if you talk to an average person they'll tell you that's fantasy they're not going to tell you that that's fit, that that's actual factual mm -hmm. they're going to push like that's fiction Right? But Moors who study know that all those Easter Islands or whatever like that, um, Bora Bora and all that stuff, those are mountain tops of Mu that sank in the Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. Just like the Caribbean Islands mm -hmm. is really Atlantis. Mm -hmm. There's not no Caribbean Island. That's why Atlantic Ocean is called Atlantic Ocean because that's where Atlantis used to be, right? But some people aren't going to talk about it. So there was, um, there was, um, so I'm still waiting for my books to come or whatever, but, um, Sister Anya sent me something in the book today about these people called Rigor. U I G H U R. Yeah. Right? Wigger. Yeah. Right? So, you know, it, as more, you know, reading whatever, you know what I mean? Pick up stuff, you know, see things or whatever like that. Okay, cool, you know, whatever. Information. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just more information, you know, just okay. to add to the whatever, right? So, Brother Rami was in contact with the great-grandson of this guy who wrote this book, right? And, and the great-grandson is talking about how he's a little skeptical about some of the stuff because, you know, he found out certain things that, you know, grandfather, great-grandfather wasn't really, you know, upfront about where he got certain information. Right. And when he checked there was no verification of nothing or whatever. Right? So um when he sent me the picture, he sent me the picture of um a Uyghur, a Uyghur queen and her consort. Right? A Uyghur queen and her consort. And the first thing that comes to mind is that the female is usually the consort. Mm -hmm. It's usually king and his consort. Mm -hmm. Right? So what are they saying? That, oh, back then it was matriarchal. Right? right. Now when we go into, you know, Mu, you know that there's more that spell more M-U. Hyphen, no not hyphen, apostrophe, whatever that thing is, whatever above the thing, you are. mu er, Right? M-U you are. So there's a tie to us with this place called Mu. Right? So going further now, figure, well, never heard of Uyghurs before. So let's, you know, let's see. Name yeah, for, for Europeans yeah. who want to be Go black, yeah. <laughs> right? Uyghur, <laughs> right? Not even knowing that it didn't mean something else. It ain't even that they're not even Uyghur, right? 
So, the Uyghurs are the people whom all Russian travelers called Sart, S-A-R-T, a name which they used for sedentary Turkish-speaking Central Asians in general, while Western travelers called them Turkey, T-U-R-K-I. Now keep in mind, during the time of Uyghurs, there was no such place as Turkey on the planet. Turkey just came about yesterday. <laughs> so how are these Western travelers relating, and this is going out there for, you know, all the more haters who want to talk about more stole from the Turks. Okay, well, there's, there's these people, Western travelers, right, that are calling Uyghurs Turkish and relating them to Turks when there was no such place as Turkey yet, which now brings in a whole new paradigm of, okay, well, you know what I mean? How much Tur <laughs> right? Who are you? <laughs> Who are you guys? You guys obviously are the Turks, yeah. right? Yeah. That's really an ancient name that they adopted <laughs> and brought it to modern time, right? right? In recognition of their language, the Chinese used to call them Chantao. Chantao means turban head. Once again, you're talking about a time frame. We're talking about before Islam. Right? We're talking about before fezes and all that stuff. Mm. These people were called by Chinese people now. You know, so now we're dealing with a whole different demographic of people now. Right. That they related these people to turbans. These are ancient people. Right? Ancient because geologically, this is the same book, page 132, geologically, the lowest city dates far back into tertiary era and was and was in existence more than 50,000 years ago as a colony of Mu. Right? 50,000. 50,000 years ago. Right? Now, you go to Nobujuali, Nobujuali told the Moors that, you know, Moors been around, flag been around for 50,000 years. Right. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, what was he really, where was he really at now? Because now we have a, we have an actual geographical landmass that we can, we can have in our mind and tie that to the words of Nobu Juali. When people say, you know, well, 50,000 years ago, you know, Kemet and, what, we're not talking about no Kemet and none of that right, crap right, there. Right. 50,000 years ago. We're not talking about from 3,000 B.C. or whatever like that. We're talking about 50,000 years ago. There were these people that Chinese people called turban heads. Right? But this term has been dropped, being considered derogatory. And the Chinese, using their own pronunciation, now call them Weiwer. W-E-I- W-U-E-R-H. As a matter of fact, there was for centuries no national name for them. <laughs> People identified themselves with the oasis they came from, like Kashgar or Turfan. And that's from Owen Lattimore. Right? <laughs> Owen Lattimore Return to China's Northern Frontier, the Geographical Journal, Volume 139. So we have to wonder, you know, if that's in Volume 139, what they got in Volume 1 to 138, <laughs> right? Number 2, June 1973, right? And then that's the picture that's in the book of the Uyghur Queen and her consort. 
and then it goes into explaining how you know the circle in the back of her represents Mu and then the small circle represents the colony of Mu that they belong to or whatever right like they go in on the picture right you know that he that she has certain things that he's holding and he doesn't have certain things which shows that you know the, the matriarchal is really what is that right the term Uyghur was not used to refer to any existing ethnic group in the 19th century but to an ancient people a late 19th century encyclopedia the cyclopedia of India and of Eastern and Southern Asia Right, so go you go get that one, right? See so you find that the Cyclopedia of India and Eastern Southern Asia said the Uyghur are the most ancient of Turkish tribes. Turkey's not ancient. Turkey's modern. So if if they're saying that there's people today called Turks and they have the red flag with the crescent or whatever like that, right? But then, this encyclopedia of India and Eastern Southern Asia is talking about Turkish people right. before there's a place whatever called Turkey, yeah. right? That's right in line with people saying Morocco. We're more say Morocco, and everybody says, oh yeah, if you guys are North Africa, go back to North Africa. No, we're not talking about goddamn North Africa when we say Morocco. That's ancient, right? That's before this modern era that people think is the real era or the real history of something, right? Turkish tribes and formerly inhabited a part of southern, the part of Chinese Tartary, which is now occupied by a mixed population of Turk, Mongol, and Kalmuk. And then go check them out. Kalmuk. K-A-L-M-U-C-K. <laughs> I'm not even going to say that about them. <laughs> the inhabitants of Yin Yang were not called Uyghur before 1921 to 1934. Westerners called the Turkic speaking Muslims of the oasis Turkey, and the Turkic Muslims were known as Taranchi. The Russians and other foreigners used the name Sark, Turk, Turkey for them. These groups of peoples identified themselves by the oasis they came from, not by an ethnic group, such as Kashgarlik, to mean Kashgari, were used. The Turkic people also used Muslimen, which means Muslim, to describe themselves. Again, we're talking about a time before there's people called Turks before a place called Turkey, before a flag with a crescent and star on it, red flag called a Turkish flag, before them, there were these individuals that were identified as T-U-R-K-I, Turkey. Right? Which led now to, so today, you know what I mean, you know, I work at the school board or whatever, so they're chilling, you know what I mean? And the teacher, the teacher is watching a DVD or a little documentary or something like that called Story of Stuff, Referenced and Annotated Script by Annie Leonard. The Story of Stuff by Annie Leonard, right? So we're talking about recycling and... Um, uh, you know, spending and all this like stuff, right? So then, you know, the teacher, while the movie's playing or whatever, the teacher calls me in the class or whatever. And then he's like, right? So he gives me the write up of the, of the video that's going on. You know what I mean? But me and the teacher build because, you know, the teacher named Solomon or whatever. Mm. So we get a crack for that, you know, mm. like he's a teacher. And his name's Solomon or whatever, and then Solomon was the wisest of the whatever, whatever, right? You know? So we always get jokes or whatever, you know, he's an Asiatic too, right? So, so I'm reading through this thing or whatever, and then I get to page eight, and then they have the little, um, um, little annotations at the end of the stuff, right? 
to herself. A Makilora, Makiladora, M A Q U I L A D O R A, M A Q U I L A D O R A, also called a Makila, is described by Stitch Organizers for Labor Justice. The use of the word Makila in Central America originates from the Arabic word makila. Right? So now, you know, I'm just... Okay, so you tell me that this word is used in Central America. Right? But the origin of the word in Central America comes from Arabic. But they're using that over here. Verifying that, you know, certain people who spoke Arabic we're in Central America, right? Just some little whatever write up crap that, you know, if I didn't go past the room or whatever and look at the thing, teacher wouldn't have said nothing, it wouldn't even have been anything, mm. right? And then bringing that up just to show once again the synchronicity that we're talking about, you know, with Mu and then the brother having the video and then we're dealing with. You know, um, where the Aboriginal and Indigenous people here, you know, Christopher Columbus came here late, blah, 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 and then now we have, you know, some little whatever mm. talking about this Arabic over here. Only way Arabic came over here is because of more. No other way that Arabic mm. came over here. And that not only that it's over here, but that people in Central America adopted certain things from Arabic and applied it to their language that they're speaking today. Right? Because everything comes right back to us. Right? So you're going to get, you know, Last Continent of Moon, go get that book. Right? James Church Ward. There were some questions or whatever. We'll just hit those out. So, there were some from Sunday. We didn't get to finish, so we just want to touch on those. And once again, you already know how it goes. If we don't get to them, you know, we'll pick them up later. So, um, so we dealt with the IRS question, right? Um, what is the significance of Executive Order 11490, King Alfred Plan, Rex 84 Plan, and United States Congressional Record, Article 13, Original Sections, Original 20 Sections, and how can these be located as evidence for my record? Well, the 13 original, the 13 amendments with the 20 sections, you could just Google that, and I know that it's online. With regard to um, King Alfred Plan and the Congressional Record, what what we have to realize as Moors is that the error is on Moors. The error is not on the European. The European is doing what he has to do to survive. But he knows that it's the Aquarian age. He knows that the sun's getting hotter. He knows that he doesn't have a chance right now if he goes up against nature. So the next best thing, you know, take out that frustration on somebody else who doesn't know. Right? Because remember that they're vampires and they're dealing with energy. Right? When, when we allow them to assist, right? We and them get rid of karmic debt. So when you see um, Asiatics and Europeans getting together and all this type of stuff, that's 
lending back. That's them saving themselves. That's them looking 50 years into the future and saying, well, yeah, at least my child's going to have melanin or whatever. And he's not going to get grow up with skin cancer or some stuff like that because I got with some European, which, which means the end of our race. They have to get with Asiatic. So the King Alfred plan, right? The King Alfred plan is the executive the executive order authorized to counteract the minority blacks, Indians, Latinos, Puerto Ricans, and poor whites. So they are going after their own people. So their own knows that something's up. Right? It's not just, you know, European God is me in, you know, Asiatic's back or whatever. Europeans are getting it too by their own. Right? In other ways. Europeans, it's European bankers that we're seeing jumping out windows or whatever to their suicide and stuff like that. It's Europeans when they can't pay their mortgage because Wells Fargo or somebody is coming down on them, IRS or something's coming down on them, that they kill their whole family, kill the dog, kill the pet, rabbit, and everybody else in the house. Right? Because they were starting to realize that the nigger stuff is now seeping onto them. You know? Because, you know, they played the game like they don't want, you know, we don't need black people around or whatever like that because, you know, they're dirty and whatever. Okay, now black people are the way. You're the new nigger, Europeans. And they got two options. Blend back in or go back to Europe. And then going back to Europe is going to be an issue because, you know, like we said, there's more in the Netherlands and all that stuff who know about their birthrights and all that. And, you know, I mean, there's more in Europe, UK, Britain, London, all that stuff who know about their birthrights or whatever. So when they go back there, they got issues. So they have no escape really. They're, they're kind of trapped. Right? Now, Drew Ali told the Moors, go to Malgami, the European nation. Right? And my perspective of not amalgamating is he's talking from a political position. He's talking from a custom position that we shouldn't we shouldn't try to be down with their way of religion, their way of diet, their way of we shouldn't amalgamate. Right? Don't get involved with those stuff. Right? Now, if they want to get down with what we got, fine. Come on down. Because you're only doing yourself a favor if you get down with what tomorrow's are doing. Right? The same thing with when um you have all these Europeans that's talking about um, um you know they're more subjects and stuff like that and you know, they're not U.S. citizens and they're renouncing their U.S. citizenship in order to be, you know, down with some indigenous tribe of some whatever, right? right? That's a logical thing to do. Because if you're a U.S. citizen, whether you're European or Asiatic, you're a property. And... King Alfred plan put on the record congressionally that the so-called minority is bound to this continent by heritage and that they have nowhere to go if something kicks off. And what Nobu Dwali even said that you have nowhere to go if something kicks off. Because you're going to have to sit here and wait for your brothers from the East to come help you. Which means that we can't go anywhere. Right? Echoing the same thing. No political asylum will be available to us if stuff kicks off over here on the level that you know we don't want it to kick off. There's no going anywhere because we're home. So being that we're home, 
we better take care of our stuff instead of always running from from our stuff because it's all ours here um, how can we properly combat family and child support court issues the best thing you could do to counteract that as far as um, these um, yeah um, these um, family court whatever is before you lay down with somebody and all that stuff and I want to have children and all that you better do nail charts for each other and make sure that you're laying down with somebody who you're cosmically aligned with so you don't bring any demons here because that's the only way that there's demons here because all these you know all these issues that we're having in family court and child whatever stuff and all that stuff one you know the Europeans always in your affairs right once the Europeans in your affairs you're going to be in some family court and all that stuff and when I say European in your affairs I'm talking about the so-called agency the governmental agency whether it's welfare check whether it's you know marriage whether it's whatever once there's a European involved in your personal affairs in life guaranteed you're going to be up in the court that's just what it is system that they created we're born into it and all we could do is find ways to manipulate the system so we don't get caught up in it because you're not going to destroy the system like we're, we're too far in right there's no destroy the system that ain't happening Okay. We can't. We can't continue. We can't continue. Um, calling them for stuff. You know, everybody wants to have issue and then want to call call them, and then get mad when you know they deal with it. How, you know what I mean? When they deal with it, how they deal with it? Because you know, you call them. Stop calling them. Call call a friend or something. Let them be mediator. You know what I mean? Right? If 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 you're in a relationship, man's abusing you, leave. Don't be calling no freaking police or whatever like that. You know? Because again, their plan is survival. And the best way that they can survive is to always always have us or have them as our administrators once they're our administrators they survive right and again you know if the questions aren't answered you know what i mean just send send it again and we'll go in more Next question. Oh, next um was a testimonial. We got a testimonial um, from Brother Yusuf Bey. Islam Pujo, great build. I'm here in Phoenix supporting a brother that's been kidnapped, first time ever coming here. And I can see the widespread corruption going on, going to that meeting room with only two feathers showing. That being said, my brother Tura Bey and I could feel unity with just the two of us and other family. We moved as one unit. We did not stumble through the so-called courtroom. Our movements were controlled by the divine. 
You could just feel it. The so-called judge stumbled in his words, and the day ended in our favor. I'm asking all of the brothers and sisters in the area who know Turah Bay to call to get the time and date of the next meeting. When the meeting was over, we even left as one unit, and none of it was planned. Turah led, and I stayed back and let the family walk past me. All the Europeans stopped dead in their tracks and did not even try to cut in. I, Yusuf Bey, brought up the rear and we moved as an army. And I know it was the divine again. Islam, Islam, Islam. Peace to you and everyone in Canaan land. Alright, so, again, unity. Right? Unity is going to happen when the Moors that are active, right, the Moors that are in harmony because they study, right? The Moors that look at Noble Dwali and realize that what he brought to the Moors, the Moors were supposed to take it, check it out, study it, reference it with some other stuff, try it, it works, so we give him supreme honor and get the word out. And once we get the word out about what this nationality and birthrights issue is and, and how it's functional to them in their life, they will be able to see what it is that is going on. Because remember, once we once we say as Moors, once we say as, okay, I'm a Moor and I'm going to go talk to that guy over there, right, about Moorish nationality. When you go and engage that individual, you're really engaging their Allah in man. You're not engaging the body. Right? So we have to recognize that in in our approach to people, when people are, are, you know, I don't know, yeah. whatever, yeah. that's their lower self. That's their lower self trying to protect itself from being, you know, yeah. shot up to the crown. Because remember that that the the when when it talks about. Um, when the scriptures talk about, and you can check this in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, when the scriptures talk about the King of David and David on the throne and whatever, that's the pioneer land. That's the open, throbbing, live pioneer land. That's David's throne. Right? And then when you sit on the throne, obviously you're the royalty, so you're going to have a crown, which is the crown chakra now, right? Right? So the pineal gland is the throne, and then the crown chakra is the proof of your divinity, which, which the, the, the light of knowledge emanating from the crown would create the halo. Right? Okay, so once once the once the the activation happens in them, right? The people who are unconscious. Once the activation happens in them, like we talked about before. But when they when they realize that what we impart to them 
make sense in their mind where oh yeah that's why whatever right. immediately that's their pineal gland starting to uncalcify you know what I mean the problem is that you know if they have bad diet they got TV on 24 hours a day, radio on 24 hours a day, they go back to calcification immediately. Right? Shut right back down. Because that little that little stimulation or whatever, you know, it's just it's just temporary. Right? You know, and coming to classes and stuff like that is what makes that permanent. What makes that you know what I mean? Freaking throbbing pineal gland. Keep throbbing. Opposed to getting hard and calcifying. Right? Prophet, Prophet Nobudwali made a statement. Um, Go to those that know law. Right? If you doubt what I'm saying, go to those that know law in an intelligent tone. You know what I mean? Go talk to the city council or whatever like that, whoever else, and they'll let you know what's up. Right? Who was Nobudwali talking about? when he made that statement, because Moors have um, this idea that because he said city officials, that it means, you know, mayor, you know, whoever else is, is in whatever government or whatever, right? We have to keep in mind that during the time of Noble Juali, you can trust those city officials. Because the city officials during that time, they, they were, they were um, sitting on a de jure foundation, right. right? So, you know, you can, you can kind of draw their card if they want to pretend like they don't know. Mm -hmm. Now, you got corporate people sitting in that position. And corporate people deal with corporate jurisdiction. They don't deal with constitutional, they don't deal with law, they deal with legalese. So as soon as you bring certain things to them, when they back off like, oh no, I don't want to hear that, we're not accepting that, don't take that as a negative, take that as, oh, so you recognize that you guys are a fraud, good. You recognize that you can't deal with me on the level that you should be dealing with me, because you're a fraud, not because what I'm saying is wrong. But because you're a fraud, good. Thank you for letting me know. Right? Another point is that he said, all right, let's go right here. You who doubt whether I, the prophet, and my principles are right for the redemption of my people, go to those that know law in the city hall and among the officials in your government and ask them under an intelligent tone and they will be glad to render you a favorable reply for they are glad to see me bring you out of darkness into the light. So he's telling more. Go to City Hall. That's one jurisdiction. Right? And among the officials in your government. Mm -hmm. Right? In your government. Which would be the heads of the Moorish movement. And when you go to them in a, a in an intelligent tone, they will be glad to render you a flavorful reply, because they would recognize that oh, you're obviously studying, because the, the only reason that you would come asking those kind of questions is because you're studying, right? And the individuals that that are, are not taking that position, right? The individuals who are taking the position of not giving the people the answer, right? 
making it seem like you know they have to tell but the people can't ask or whatever you know the only way that they'll know is if you know they come and sit down and then we you know spew whatever we got right. you know with our high degrees of knowledge because we're in the Arab chamber and then we're in the council of the whatever mm -hmm. and we're the and we have the badge with the whatever so you know we're the ones that when that's not what it is I mean, we're supposed to be the verification we're supposed to validate we're supposed to confirm where people are at as leaders we're supposed to say oh yeah exactly that's where whatever like that buy you know what I mean and then send somebody who doesn't know that's why it's not a big deal with us when we say you know when we have class or whatever and you know there's not more is there same more every week every week every week where we the same more because uh, what are you doing there? Like, this, this is for dumb people. This is for people who don't know. Yeah, there's going to be more, you know, because of the camaraderie, because they got some type of, you know, position, mufti or whatever, they got to be at the door, so they're going to be at every, you know what I mean? You know, secretary, they're going to be at the door because, you know, people want to do documents, see you, do whatever like that, blah, blah, blah. But, but the, the body of people who are coming there for information, right? There should be new people every week. Because people from last week who were sitting there, they're supposed to go. They got a week of study that they would have did. You know what I mean? And either they're Sorry, coming to yeah. verify some stuff or they're sending people, oh, yo, you know what? You need to go check in the class or whatever. Because, you know, they break down to them, whatever it is, you know what I mean? And then come back to the same thing. If you doubt, you know, this is now the individual now who just got the info. Yeah. And they're talking to Negro, Black, Color, or whatever. If you doubt what I'm saying, and you think that what I'm saying is wrong, whatever, why don't you go to the class and go talk to the officials in the class and let them put you on the phone. Right? And then the only time that we should really see more is when we have town hall meetings or when we have convention or when we have, like, you know, some, like, big event. You know what I mean? You drive all the mores yeah. out or whatever like that. Other than that, more should be taking their place amongst the affairs of men. Yeah. Should be doing their job of going out and getting these people that are classified as Negro black colored people and are about to go through the <laughs> through the ringer. You know what I mean? And don't know that they're about to go through the ringer. Right? Um I will get started. I've listened to a lot of the historical videos, so where do you suggest I start? Unfortunately, I work Tuesday evening, but I will listen to the class and send my questions by email. Thank you for a timely response. Is there an assessment tool for the different areas of study that can be utilized to gauge the depth of understanding? Once again, we tell people, go to the online university, rvbaypublications.com. Go there, stay there for a little bit, guarantee you're going to get what it is that you need from there. And again, when you get information and you are assessing where you are with regard to the information, you know, it doesn't have to be drastic level, go flag down, you know what I mean, no highway man or nothing like that to test it out. You know what I mean? Just test it out with anybody out here. You know, little guy in a Hindustan store or something like that. You go in the store, you just, yeah. you know, usually, throw something out there. Usually See? it starts like, you know, for me, it usually starts by the way I eat. Mm. When it starts from the way I eat, I tell you exactly why. Right. Like and you actually almost say, you're this? Uh-uh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It would be like a maze, like, oh, I didn't think people, you would know something like this. Something like that. Right, right, right. Uh, right. Uh, right. Yeah. And then yeah. They, they usually, you know, they have their assumption. You know that every everybody with locks is from Jamaica. Until they talk to you, right? Um, we have another testimonial, right? 
Um, used my nationality card today at Costco. Went to an unconscious brother tending the register. Gave the card to him. He called the supervisor. She told him, go ahead and do what needs to be done. She had never seen that card before. He asked if I was an American native. And then asked where I am originally from. What country? I told him Jamaica. He then looked at me again and said, how can I get one like this? Because... That was his original birthplace. I passed him the info and waiting for him to get back to me. So, once again, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> you go out there as a more and you exercise your birthright. It does not mean go kick a <laughs> freaking highway man in the shin or whatever <laughs> to test your birthright out. You know what I mean? Doesn't mean go get a ticket. And you know, Carla Carl the other day, like, right. I told her, like, what, three, three years ago when, when she said that she knew me? Like, mm -hmm. yeah. But she goes, the other day, she just like, so oh, I just found out something. And uh, uh, she's like, yo, read this, look at this, watch yeah. this. Yeah. I'm like, yo, you're getting on your yeah. shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do? <laughs> right? Because it doesn't, it doesn't go away like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't be because you know, time. You I get, told her, always take your time. Don't yeah, there's no don't rush, rush or nothing like that. Yeah, there's no. It's not. Once you're on this level of information, yeah, you don't. It, there's no need for panic time. She's like, I'll change her diet. Yeah, yeah. She wearing all hair no more. Right, right. Yeah, she has little fake nails. Right. Like, like, yeah. No. And you know, and, and you know, she was on the, the yeah, hair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you know. So you know something's going on when like, they give up the nails and the hair and stuff like that, and they start making this like, transition. Yo, I'm done with you know it. what I mean? Like, that's good. And again, for people out there who don't know, you know, that that's a younger sister. You know what I mean? She's not some old head. That's a younger sister. So the information is really for the young and unborn for real. Because it does something to them. You know what I mean? It changes their perspective of how they, they see themselves. And once their perspective of how they see themselves changes, then the perspective of how they see life changes. You know what I mean? And it, and it becomes a whole a whole different thing. So it becomes this, this whole new thing. You know what I'm saying? Right? Um, also, we want to... Um, Touch on because um, brother sent me a couple of other questions. Now, um, this is the line of questioning that will come from the old dirty more, right? Because they've been so conditioned in the way that that they present the Moorish movement to the masses that they don't even know that they're playing their song. Right? So this this one of these dirty Moors out here by the name of Ras Sadi El, mm -hmm. the elder, mm -hmm. right? Um these are the lines of questions that he asked a younger Moor that approached him on some, you know, more science temple, you know, mm -hmm. to find out some stuff or whatever, Share right? Knowledge. Share knowledge. Because, you know, you got that on your name, you say that you're, you know, grand, supreme, <laughs> grand, whatever, or something like that. Okay, well, got you, know, answers, you got some answers, yeah. right? So this is what the elder came back at him with, right? What temple do you belong to? Who is your local grand chief? Who is your national grand chief? How might we assist you? Why do you seek us for? So, if every individual Who's coming into the Moorish movement for the first time gets those line of questions, right? 
immediately they don't want them to do it. And more than likely, those line of questions is going to make them not want to deal with this ever again in their, in their entire life. No matter what it is that they see with regard to the Moorish movement, no matter how good it sounds, no matter, you know, what type of positive experience is expressed, they're going to look at it like, I don't want nothing to do with that. Which is what's been done for the past hundred years. Why we're just finding out about this recent. When this is something that we should have been known about. Just like we know about everything else. Right? Now, oh yeah, where's those first papers? Yeah. So, so, so you know, right? So this is some dialogue that I had with this same individual because I already know what he's dirty or whatever like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, they want to play this game like, you know, well, we're dirty because, you know, we don't do this and we don't do that and we don't blah, blah, blah. But, you know, we got grays and stuff like that. And they've been in this movement for however long and they can't tell me 100,000 people that they nationalized. But, you know, okay. we're dirty, <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. So addressing me, right? Um, wow, where did this dumb and stupid person come from? Guess this fool cannot read what has long been written about Allah and our holy and divinely ordained Prophet Ali, Ali's relationship. How dumb and stupid can you guess? They don't read from the Holy Quran of the MSTA, chapter 8, for example, verse 8 to 16. Well, this is a free lesson for all such dummies and stupid as hell who dare to add El Bey or Ali to their names. Such a person, such a person are completely out of their league, less along out of their depth here. This is one of the major reasons why there is such a looking down on the membership of the Moorish Divine Nation. Right? Now, again, the individual with grades or whatever. This is the individual who used to be an ex pimp. This is the individual who doesn't even acknowledge his own son. Because his son came from one of his hoes that he impregnated or whatever, right? And he straight this his son. Like, his son's a man now, right? His son's a big man, you know what I mean? Like, he's a man, right? This guy is great or whatever. And he doesn't acknowledge his own son. But he's talking about he's a leader of some Moorish whatever. When he doesn't acknowledge his own seed that he created. And then talking about other people are dirty. Right? They were probably out getting high or chasing some female or male around the temple time. Or wish they could have simply kept their dumb and stupid as hell mere opinion to themselves. Look how many people are viewing this, and there are probably a lot of so-called adepts and sheiks that maybe they would have been better off singing a damn song. Well, this goes to show that all our followers and members that what has been saying for decades is still truthful, reading is fundamental, and yet understanding what you read is not, this person is probably a fanatic or whatever. Now, once again, you have individuals who have tasted the fame and nobility. You know what I mean? They drank from the golden cup. They held the scepter. You know what I mean? They, 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 you know, felt the power that you can get by it or have a title or whatever like that. Right? Yeah. That's why they always talk about follow. 
and they never talk about making people leaders. They want to be the leader all the time. Mm -hmm. They never, ever, they always talk about members need to do whatever mm -hmm. and followers or whatever. And they never talk about those members and followers getting into the position of leader. Why? Because they know that those individuals are going to do a better job than them in that seat. And many of these individuals who are in this position of having so-called seats of power, they're about popularity. They're about being known as the supreme whatever, mm -hmm. the grand whatever. Mm -hmm. When, like Moore said, you know, we can strap our freaking adept charm and call a great Dane Grand Sheik and put him at the podium. <laughs> and if people are going to come in there and talk about their sitting down for a temple meeting with a great Dane with a fez on, talk about or whatever like that <laughs> and they're sitting there they're not getting up to leave or nothing like that <laughs> you already know that one the people there are warped in their head they're zombies right and the people who strap that grand cheek on that great name and trying to convince people that yeah he's qualified to teach people or whatever law or whatever like that those guys are, are crazy and tripping and that place needs to be burned to the ground that they call more science or whatever. Right? And there's more because, you know, we're going to do a, a, a breakdown class or whatever about all these old moors, you know what I mean, all these snack talking moors, you know what I mean, that have um, grand chic titles, national grand chic, whatever like that. But you know, they got they got boyfriends. They're alcoholics. They got grand sheep drawer and they got pistol in the grand sheep drawer <laughs> of the temple. Sadiel's one of them. That in his drawer, this grand sheep desk that he's teaching from to teach people about Moorish whatever. In his drawer, he has a pistol. When Drew Ali said, don't even carry a pocket knife. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, but we're dirty. When he's directly going against what no Drew Ali laid down. Right? Right? They know what you need it for. Right? Because they're going to do whatever to stay in them seats. They're willing to do whatever to stay in them seats. Right? But, you know, don't worry about them. Get to work. And realize what no withdrawal you brought to you. And take that and do something with it. Because nothing's going to be done by these people who have had this information for a hundred years and did nothing with it. Trust me, nothing's going to be done. They're going to continue playing this game that they're the authority with all the letters out there that Mulia wrote. They're going to continue playing this game that they're the authority when, you know, they were ex-pimps and they're still playing pimp game and stuff like that only with their people now, right? You know, for popularity. So, you know, we, we encourage more to make sure that they study their profit, take them serious because, trust me, He's watching you from the soul plane, and if you say that you're Marsh American and you honor your prophet and you know about Allah and you care about your people, we'll redeem them. Want to say Islam to the 22 people online for being here for opening up the two gateways we also want to put on the record don't forget 9 30 more heritage and history school blogtalkradio.com mhhs 
hyphen eyes wide open and the call in number 347-945-5899 347-945-5899 and also just to get these ones out here don't forget you got um got coming up this Saturday exit for exit from Canada enter Canaan land lecture with Q&A at 26 Delena Avenue North June 13th 1 p.m. for info contact 289-489-3849 that's for the lecture in Hamilton you do will that you know you see some people you know that there's you know, certain people out there, Nation of Gods and Earths and all that. We'll see if they show up. If not, no worries. We'll continue doing what we do. And don't forget, Cincinnati coming up. That's August 8th at 3566 Reading Road at the Avondale Branch Cincinnati Public Library. Saturday, August 8th, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Branchy Kujo Lecture. Who are the Americans? So once again, Islam to all the Moors. Peace, love, and hotep. We'll just do our closeout. And we'll see you all yeah. on um, Sunday for class. Don't forget, third Thursday of the month, of this month, you got Sons of Allah coming up on Blog Talk Radio. Five on the left, two on the right. A lot of Father of the Universe, of Father, the universe. Father of Love, Father of love truth, truth, and Peace, and freedom, freedom, and Justice. justice. Allah is my protector, Allah is my, protector my, guide, my guide, and my salvation. My salvation. By, night, by night and by day, who is Holy Prophet, Noble Juali, Ashe, Islam, Islam Wars, Peace and Hotel.